Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. As millions of people have watched videos of our home theater installs, one request we kept getting was to do a video on how to upgrade an existing theater. This is the first of several videos we're gonna do on how to upgrade a theater. We recently upgraded the top theaters in our showrooms and we did a time lapse of the upgrade in our Raleigh showroom so we could share the process with you. Let me first set the stage on what we're trying to accomplish and then walk you through the process using our time lapse video. This particular theater was an incredible theater when it was first built around 20 years ago. But since then, technology has progressed substantially, the requirements for spatial audio speaker locations have changed, and the theater itself just looked dated. So our goal was to bring everything up to the current level as we do in our customer homes. Many of you have likely seen videos we've done with a particular audio advice design that has won a lot of accolades. This particular design uses our floor to ceiling acoustic panel system along with custom LED lighting. This was also the design we used in the theater we did for the Poster King if you want to see another example. The first big change in this design was to increase the screen size from 151 inches to 186 inches. In the early days of theater, there were generally accepted specs on how wide your screen should be. Today, most people want as big a screen as possible. So you can see in the new theater that the screen is literally wall to wall. To project an image this size with enough light, we use the Sony ES7000 projector, which itself has 3,200 lumens. However, when you use a widescreen like this 2.4 film screen from Stuart, your projector is not using all of its light output. So we also added a panomorph lens, which allows us to use all of the pixels from the Sony to light up the screen. The Sony and the panomorph work in conjunction with a MadVR NV Extreme video processor, which does a couple of key things. First, it processes the image to produce an HDR image that a projector by itself cannot produce. Second, it eliminates the need for zooming the projector in and out. The MadVR identifies the aspect ratio of every piece of content and instantly matches it to the screen. If you want to learn more about the MadVR, check out the link in the description. In fact, we will put links to everything I talk about in the description if you want to see a more in-depth video on just that piece. On the audio side, the original speakers were not in the optimal spatial audio positions as they were installed prior to the current Dolby Atmos specification. So we started with our home theater design tool, which is a free tool on audiovice.com where you can put in your room dimensions and interactively build out your theater and it will place your speakers, your projector and everything else in real time. We then had a team of our theater designers complete the exact design with the unique aspect of this room, including a full 3D render of the final room. In terms of audio, if customers have the budget, we generally will get them into a JBL synthesis system. JBL is known for having installed the systems in many of the best commercial theaters in the country, and the same is true for private home theaters. There are a host of advantages of the JBL synthesis system. One main key point is that the system uses compression drivers. Compression drivers are dramatically more efficient than standard dome tweeters and thus have incredible dynamic range. They can go from a very soft sound to slamming you in the chest in a fraction of a second, which is exactly what you want in a theater experience. Okay, so let's talk about which JBL speakers are in this system. As we walk in, you'll notice we program this thing with control force. So when you enter the theater, it wows customers as all the LED lights come on in tandem. And then the lights come on the top, the star ceiling lights up, and it sets this whole thing up for an incredible demo and experience. Okay, so up front, we have three big SCL2s. The SCL2s have three big eight inch drivers plus an inch and a half compression driver. So one there, there, and there. Then, We've got for the front wides, SCL7s. They are angled a 15 degree angle and have a 90 degree dispersion. Getting that waveguide that controls the dispersion is huge in each of these speakers and we match it up in the design for covering the seating area. Then the next thing that happens is we have sides here. These are SCL4s, which again, give us more full range to get the full experience around you. And then in the back, SCL7s pointing in, SCL6s coming straight in. And then finally, in terms of Atmos, for ceiling speakers, we have in the ceiling 
SEL5s. These have seven inch drivers, but they're angled at a 45 degree angle with a 60 degree spread. And you'll notice if you look in the home theater design tool, it'll actually show you exactly how to position them. And in this case, it gets them right in front of the front chairs, right behind the back and just to the right and left. So every single chair gets a great experience. And in particular, that main listening position Everything is aimed at it. So how about the subwoofer side? Let's jump over here. In the front, we have two SSW2s. These are huge subs that you can see on the floor here. It's a 12 inch driver here, 12 inch driver there with huge ports here on the front. Now, there's a huge debate as to whether you would do ported subs or not ported. But what I can tell you, in a room of this size, we want to move a lot of air, which is what these things can do. Plus, there's two more subs in the back. Now. I'm not gonna walk into calibrating in this particular video because I've got another video where I walk through how do you calibrate systems. But what I'll make the point is, if you're upgrading a theater that you've had for a long time, and at the time you probably did not have a processor that could phase align all your subs, you are in for a treat. If you upgrade your system and get a processor that can phase align them, it will tighten the base and improve everything in your room. If you're interested in calibrating your audio or your video and really nailing it, check out the playlist we have on YouTube. We actually have a full playlist that covers all the things you can do to improve your video, including I've got test images that I put up there and everything so you can do it yourself if you're a DIY person or maybe you're a company getting into building theaters for people. And I've got a whole one that does it for audio from setting your lip sync, everything else. If you check those out, you'll find that you can really improve the experience to the level that we're doing for consumers. I'll come back to the final theater in a few minutes, but now let's take a look at the time lapse of the rebuild. Okay, so you can see here, the first thing that you do when you're upgrading a theater like this is we've ripped off all of the original paneling and we're taking off all the blocking that was holding it. Look at these soffits. We have soffits in the top right and left that were actually holding cabling and speaker cable that was going to the front. You pull out the bottom of the soffit first so that you don't destroy your cabling. And so you can see now we've got the soffits totally out and we've got the cable still there. We've now pulled the full ceiling out. So we're basically back to a completely empty room. And the only thing that's coming out now is we've put in the electrical you can see for where the recess cans will be. If you're doing a job like this, one, make sure you're using a laser level to level everything out and get your speakers in exact right positions. And make sure you totally seal off any electronics that are next door as we did here to keep any dust out of everything else. Now let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we've got the new sheetrock walls are totally up and the sheetrock ceiling, and we're going to go through and cut out each of the speakers. We actually use a laser level to do this, and we set them based on what you'll see in the, in the tool. It shows you exactly the height of the tweeter, and then you can set everything up and match it using the laser level. So one of the things I want to do is pause the video here and just stop this mid-construction. We often get a lot of questions about design and one of the biggest misconceptions is people will go to the Dolby site and they will see the image of the Dolby chairs in there which has no back, no other chairs next to it and they'll see side speakers that are a little bit behind the chair and they've got the speaker at ear level. What's actually happened is Dolby is just trying to show you that there is a bed layer of speakers that goes out but in fact ourselves and the other top designers in the country will show you that these speakers need to go up higher so that in real life when you actually have backs to chairs and people sitting next to you the mathematics is basically you want this to be close to ear level but high enough to play so that everyone is line of sight from ear to the speaker so again most of the time you'll see this and if you use our home theater design tool you'll see in the tool it actually does the calculation of how much to raise this up so it can play over people's heads which is what you see here to the main listening position then from these side speakers forward through the front wides here and all the way to the fronts, you're gonna see we've created a plane which creates a bed layer plane for all of the um, bed layer sounds and we try to separate that as much as we can into the height speakers and you'll see up here when you see the height speakers these are all aimed at the main listening position and you'll see in the Dolby site that the midpoint is about 45 degrees in if you have a speaker that's not 100% aimable you may have to bring that into about 30 degrees again the home theater design tool on our site does that as well as good designers in this case we actually have a speaker that is aimed at 45 degrees in the speaker itself so we've got a lot of latitude throughout the room the one thing that's different about that and I'll show you back here just as an example in rear speakers 
Everything is on the main plane, except for when you have a case where you've got three rows like this, the rear speakers have to play over the rear. So there needs to be a calculation to go, how much do these need to come up to be able to play over the rear seats and give everyone line of sight from this to your ear. And that's how this is set up. Then the last piece of the puzzle here is you'll see we've got lights that are here. These are DMF can lights that'll sit behind the star ceiling. And people often ask us, we've got our audio advice floor to ceiling acoustic system that many of you have probably seen in other theater videos we do. This is how we get the LED linear lights down through. And you'll see we've got these throughout. We've also put the vents back up in here and are sort of prepping everything for the in state, including setting up for the electrical outlets that will go under the revelation chairs in here. Okay, so now we jump back into the time lapse. What you can see happening here is we're actually putting in the spots between each of the panels. This is where we're gonna put the tracks to hold the panels, but also we have a really unique design here where we put the diffusers for the LED lights that go between the panels. And it's a pretty cool new, new way of doing it. Now you'll see a lot of people in the room here. Why? Because we actually are doing so many of these theaters now that we're actually training more people to do it. So you'll see there's people installing and also people getting trained at the same time. But you'll see we're boxing out each of our floor to ceiling panels. Uh, we've put on a mixture of diffusive and absorptive panels that will go in between each of these blocks that you see. And you'll see as everyone gets trained, these different people, we actually, we just finished one in New York. We finished one in Florida recently, and then a handful in North Carolina. Okay, so now you can see our team has come back. We're beginning to put each panel in. And now you'll see in the star ceiling, we're actually putting the fabric in on the star ceiling. And in this case, we actually did a true sort of complete star ceiling covering from side to side, front to back, and the entire ceiling. But you can see, this is true fiber optic cabling. So the fiber optic uh, actually has layers in it. So when you look up, it appears that the stars are totally different levels. It's super cool when you turn off the lights. And I wanted to, I asked these guys just to show you generically right in this one clip, exactly how we put in the fabric once we've got the panels installed into the tracks. So you can see I'm uh, putting it in right there and we're right near the end. So we've got a few left to do, putting in the back of it and literally that's how we do these systems. It's, it's quite a bit of cool work, but when you get really good at it, like our team has, it comes out really impressive. So one of the things you'll notice from the home theater design tool is it actually calculates the sight lines for you so that every row has a direct line of sight to the screen, and it will tell you the exact bottom of the height of the screen so that everyone can see it perfectly. Now, in this case, it's doing the calculation based on using the Revelation chair. Uh, this chair has actually got a really fascinating story. We used to have so many customers come to us and say, I want a better chair, I want it better ergonomics, I want a built-in uh, tray table that you can take out and put in it. And we just could not find the perfect chair. So we started making our own Revelation chair and we put everything in it that we wanted and the customers wanted. And obviously it became the number one selling chair that we put in theaters across the nation. But just to show you as an example, it has obviously you know, motorized recline capability. But what's important is not just that you can recline, but then you can move this headrest and we bring it out at a 45 degree angle. So no matter what height you are, it supports your head watching the television. Then we put in lumbar support. So if you're watching a two hour movie, it really protects your back there. And then we did dimmable lighting. If you do lighting in a chair, make sure it's dimmable. So you can hit the button multiple times so it doesn't bleed onto the screen. And then we put a home button in it to bring it back. And and then finally, every single chair actually has a tray table in it. You can take the tray table out to put your popcorn or drink on, throw it onto here. Anyways, it turns out this is our hottest selling chair. It's a really cool one, so we put it in the showrooms. So we actually opened these theaters to the public this weekend. We had lots of people come to check them out. And it reminded me that oftentimes those of us who live and breathe in the theater world, we forget how much happiness it brings customers when they have a theater in their home and they leave the rough day that they had at work and just escape into watching a Netflix film or maybe a movie on Kaleidoscape. Boy, was it fun just to watch the smiles on these people's faces. If you're thinking about building a theater or updating your current one, you should definitely go to the home theater page on audioadvice.com where we have our free home theater design tool, 
buyer's guides, how-to videos, an inspiration gallery, and everything home theater related. We also have expert designers in our stores and online who can work with you to design the theater for your specific room and budget. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit notify to be the first to get more content like this. We will be releasing a few more videos showing different examples of upgrades as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.